kids on you then. Alright, good morning. How's everybody? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, thanks for the prayer, but uh, we're going to do it again because I need it, okay? So if you could join me in your knees, and we should pray again.
And within a month, that, that pastor was out of it. And then they got a third pastor. And really, and what happened to this pastor? Well, Ms. Briggs saw this one, like, as soon as he walked into the door, this was a new pastor. He just came out of Bible school. And Ms. Briggs was like, oh, this guy's not going to make it. And there was one more problem, too. He talked too much about mission. He wanted everybody in the church to go on mission trips. And Ms. Briggs was like, oh, this is heresy. This can't happen in here. So she wrote a bunch of letters again, and she talked to the elders, and that guy was out of there like in three weeks. So the thing came that nobody wanted to come into that church. No pastor wanted to preach there because they knew how high Ms. Briggs was. Her spirituality was so high that nobody could compare. But then, so the guy was like, well, so what happened? I mean, did the church fall apart? And, and, and the well-dressed man tells him, no, it was better. Because now this gave the ability to Ms. Briggs to concentrate on the elders and on the deacons. And what happened to the elders and the deacons? Well, Ms. Briggs noticed that they were wasting the money and things that wasn't necessary. Patching the rooms and getting new benches and this and that. And she started telling them that they were using their money, their money wrong. And then a lot of people started, you know, they just couldn't handle Ms. Briggs. Their spirituality was too high. Their discernment was so great that everybody just started dropping out of the church. And, and then the men said, wait a minute, so who's in the church? Well, a few people stayed, the strong ones, the ones that could really, really take the spirituality, they started staying, but the rest started leaving and leaving. But Ms. Briggs kept finding out more problems and more problems. And eventually, Ms. Briggs was the only one in the church, and the church became the way it's supposed to be, peaceful and quiet. So the guy, the guy looks at me and he tells us, well, I, I don't get it. How, how is the church still here with only one person? And then the guy tells him, well, no, Miss Briggs is not here anymore. She went to another church to purify it. But then the, 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 we, we just came in here and we bought the church because it was, they were selling it so cheap. So we came in and we bought it and we went into a restaurant. So I think it's time enough for the brunch time. So I think the service is now ready. If you want to come in with us, you know, we fixed the church really nice. You know where the pupil was? That's where we put the, the Santa Claus. And the guy's like, oh, you know what? I think I'm going to pass and I'm going to go somewhere else. You know, I have things to do. Well, if you ever come back, just think about us. You know, we're here 24 hours a day. You know, we would love to, for you to come in. And the guy gets into a car, his car and as he's leaving, the, the well-dressed guy goes like, oh, one more thing. And if you hear about another church that's getting purified, let us know because we're planning to expand. <laughs> kind of funny, huh? You think that happens in the church now? Where we have people that they just criticize every little thing that they can possibly think of. Yeah? Alright, so this is what the sermon is about. The sermon is, what is the purpose of the church? And I was supposed to put there, uh, and why does it fail? But I'll tell you that now. So, what is the purpose of the church? Next. Alright, so the purpose of the church, first of all, is a medium. Do you guys know what a medium is? What is a medium? Anybody? No? What? Okay. Like a middleman? A person could be, let's say, can, can TV be a medium? Yeah, a medium is an object or a person that you could use to translate a message or something, right? So then we have, uh, the church is supposed to be a medium. A medium of what? It's supposed to be a medium that God uses uh, for the salvation of men. We are here not just to look pretty. We're not here so we can show off the church or say that we come on the Sabbath or anything like that. It's a medium. It's a, it's a tool that God will use. It will handle. It will mold so that we can go out there, represent Him, and bring more people in. To say, not to just, again, to look pretty, but to save them. It's an organization. Well, how do you, would you describe an organization? Listen. A what? Listen. Okay. Well, what's in a... What do you do in a business? You sell something, right? That's perfect. You sell something. So the, the, it's an organization. It's, it's meant to do something. So sell a product, to give a service. It, it's meant to, to not just stay in its in, in this four walls, but to go outside and do something with it, correct? So it's for service. It's an organization for service. And, and we're not supposed to, again, just to be here to be pretty. We're supposed to go out there and service people. It's, it, that's the whole purpose. What did Jesus do when he was here? He stayed closed in one little door because he was traveling everywhere, sending salvation. That's what he was doing. He was sending that product of salvation. He was servicing people. He was helping people. And it's, a, it, it's also to spread the gospel. So that's the product. 
The product is the gospel. So we're basically becoming an organization that sells the gospel of God so you can be saved. Does that make sense? Okay. And the last thing it's supposed to be is a repository. You know what a repository is? Anybody? Frank? You know what a repository is? No? Uh huh. Can we get it probably like a bank? Maybe? It's a bank. So what is a repository of? The grace of God and the love of God. So, it's a medium that God is going to choose. Every single person that's in here is not here by coincidence. You have been chosen. You're here for a purpose. God said, I want, uh, I want uh, Steve. I want Diana. I want uh, uh, Jackie. I want every single person that's in here to work for my organization. I'm going to teach them a bunch of stuff that's in my repository, which is the Bible. And then you're supposed to go out there and service people so that they can be saved. That's the purpose of, this, of, of the church, okay? Now, what happens? Let's read uh, Isaiah 56, 7. And so I can help out with that. God. 
So what are we representing? What bigger organization can you possibly be on? That's the church. That's how big it's supposed to be. We're not here to bigger. We're not here to worry about what this person is wearing. And don't get me wrong, it has its merits. You're not going to come in here with shorts, you know. But that's not the purpose. The purpose is to show that what God did for us, we're supposed to witness, we're supposed to say, I met Jesus. This is what he did for me. And I want to show it to you. And with that said, you bring them in, you show them what happened, you teach them how to do it, and they will be saved. And then in turn, they'll do the same thing. They'll keep witnessing to others. Uh, next. Okay. LNG White. The church is God's fortress, his city of refuge, which he holds in, revolt, uh, in a revolted world. Any betrayal of the church is treachery to him who has bought mankind with the blood of his only begotten son. You guys see how big this is? Any betrayal of the church is considered treachery to God. Because what? It wasn't cheap. Let's talk about an organization. To open up an organization, what do you have to do? You have to sign papers, you have to get permits, you gotta have money, you gotta get the buildings, you gotta get the workers, you gotta get the, the papers, the pencils, the inks, the computers, you gotta get gas for the workers, you gotta get the product, you gotta do all these things for this thing, for this organization to actually work. God gave his son. God gave his son for this organization. Not so that we could just come in here, lay back, and start criticizing people. Oh, that guy is wearing the wrong tie. Oh, you know, Michael and his hair, I don't know. You know, he needs a haircut. No, we didn't come for that. That's not the purpose of the church. The purpose of the church is to witness, witness what God did for us so that we can share that with everybody else. Let's do another quote from Energy White. Uh, God's church is the core of holy life. We will bear the gift and endow with the Holy Spirit. The members are to find their happiness in the happiness of those who they help and bless. So where do we find happiness? How, did, how, how, how is God happy? How does God get happy? How does Jesus get happy? So the Bible says the angels, they celebrate when somebody what? So how do they get happy? How are we supposed to get happy? When we out there and saving someone. We're not supposed to be stuck in this wall. And yes, she says that it is a fortress. But it's a fortress against sin. It is a fortress so we can keep the stuff of the world outside. Not the people, but the sin. And we'll see later on how they mis uh, the, the church misinterpreted that in, in, in a little bit. Uh, next. Why, why did the church fail? What do you think the church failed back then? Let's go back to uh, maybe in Moses' time a little bit further. Any idea? Give, give me some ideas of why the church fell. They were into themselves? Yes. Uh, anybody else? Yes, perfect. Yeah, that was good. God first chose uh, the Israelites to be his church. Okay, so again, we'll go back to the choosing. So back then, right now, we are the chosen ones. God has chosen us. We're here because he has chosen us. Not because we wanted to go, we were curious. He's the one that said, okay, I'm going to get that one. I'm going to get that one, and I'm going to get that one. Let's bring them in. Okay? So at that moment, let's go back to the Israelites. The Israelites were chosen. It wasn't by anything that they did. God said, okay, you know what? I'm going to get this little group. I'm going to get this group, and they're going to be the, the ones that are going to be in my organization, and they're going to have the repository so they can spread it. So they were to be the light of the world. Through them, God will work His power and His revelations. So imagine this. You have a God that is omnipotent. He could do whatever he pleases. Nobody can tell him anything. And he chose us as people to represent him. And he says, to this people, I'm going to show my revelations and my power. What happens when you're in an organization and you're supposed to go out there and introduce a product? Do they just send you with nothing in your hands? They give you the product, right? They give you whatever it's supposed to be. A computer. They allow you to have they, you got to travel to Europe. They pay for your trips. They give you the power of the company. You could do whatever you want as long as you represent the company in the right way. So you have a God that creates the universe. And he says, you could have my power. You see how responsive that huge responsibility is? 
That's a cool company. Imagine you can walk on water. Huh. So what happens to these people? So they're chosen. He says, you're going you're gonna to reveal everything that's about me. I am the product. I want you to show me up. Go represent me. And I'm going to give you everything that you need. You don't have to worry about anything. You just go. I got the money. I got the food. I got the product. I got the clothing. You just go. So he gives them all that. So I want you guys to join me on uh, Romans. Let's go to Romans. Romans 21 to 22. And somebody help me out with that. Build, build up a wall of 
separation between themselves and all other nations. They robbed God of the service He had required of them. And they robbed their fellow men of religious guidance and their only example. So it's the same thing with the company. They start getting all this equipment and like, oh, you know what, let's do our own thing. You can preach this, we can preach that. And they, they start robbing the company, the, the owner, the creator, and they say, you know what, yeah, you created this and that, but we can do something better. And then those walls, that fortress that was supposed to protect us from the practices of the world, they made it even stronger, but now they made it in the sense that nobody else can come in here. This is just for us. And that's why the church never feels up. Because it's like, no, that guy over there, that drunk guy? I'm not going to preach to him. I mean, I need so many, you know, that's up, up there. Somebody with money. Somebody that's good looking. Somebody knows how to dress. Somebody knows how to speak. That, that guy over there, you see drunk? No, that, no. Put him aside. Let's get that, that rich guy with the Ferrari. Yeah, him. we'll get him to church. That's basically what they were doing. They were picking and choosing who was going to live. That's it. Because sin is sin. Sin causes death. And they were choosing who was going to die and who was going to live. And they were taking all the power, all the stuff that God gave them and told them to do, and they were saying, nah, that's not going to work. We're going we're gonna to figure out who's going to get saved and who's not, according to what they thought. Let's talk about the priest and the ruler. And go. All right, go. And go and go and go. Okay. So the priest and the rulers, these are the problems that they were starting to have. Okay, so you have the, this organization, this, this CEO, and he's telling you, okay, here's my product. And, and this is what you're supposed, how you're supposed to train the people to use the product. This, this goes into the ceremony. So then they start going into the ceremonies, and they put, put so much attention on the ceremonies that they forget again about the CEO. These aren't just the rules to get to the CEO. You have to talk to the CEO. The CEO knows best. And then they're going like, no, no, the ceremonies. If you do this like this, if you do this like that, if you this, then you'll be safe. You don't have to worry about God. Stop this. And then they were worried about the legal religion. They were worried about this rules over rules and on top of rules and on top of rules and on top of more rules. And they were saying, if you do the ceremonial ways this way, and if you follow these rules, then you'll be safe. And then God just completely got out of the picture. What happened? It's just, there's nothing. Where's the salvation? They were worried more about the works. They were worried about, more about the, oh, I'm supposed to dress like this and I'll be safe. If I go to church on Saturday, I'll be saved. If I don't lie, I'll be saved. If I don't do this, I'll be saved. Well, where's God? What happened to God? He was completely taken out of the picture. They were relying more on their own consciousness or on their own rules. And then they started thinking that they were self-righteous. The worst of them all. Which is how Satan failed. That's how Satan did. He started thinking, I can be holy. I don't need God. I can follow the rules on my own. I can do everything on my own. See, I don't need you. I did this. I don't need you. I can be holy. So then they started thinking like this. And then the, all the Israelites, the whole people that were like, no, we are the chosen one. We follow these specific rules, and you guys don't, so we are better than you. That's why the, the, the church failed. Because we started putting God to the side. We started putting our concentration on everything else. The rules, the ceremonials, the sacrifices, the way you dress, the way you spoke, everything was perfect. He said, God, if you do this, you'll be fine. Don't worry about God. Everything's fine. You can be righteous yourself. You don't need that. You can do it. Next. The faith that works by love and purifies the soul could find no place for union with the religion of the Pharisees, made up of ceremonies and the injections of meat. So then they started concentrating more on the ceremonies and they completely forgot that it was all symbolical. The, the ceremonials itself didn't do anything. The whole sacrificial thing, the whole, uh, 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 you know, the ceremonies, the whole hitting of the lamb, the, the lambs, the, 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 everything that had to do with the sanctuary, it was all symbolical. The sanctuary in itself is not going to save you, but it's important to tell you how to get to God. It's a blueprint. Like I might have said, it's a blueprint so that you can get to him. But the, the, the sacrifices or the, the rules for the ceremony themselves were not going to save you. But they twisted it around and they say, yeah, this is going to save us. And they completely forgot who created that. Everything had a purpose. I'm not saying throw it away. Everything had a purpose. The ceremonials had a purpose to tell you how to get to God. The, let's go, for example, to the, uh, the, the lever. The lever where you wash your hand. What did that represent? Baptism. baptism. You guys are sleeping on the ceremony. Baptism. We represent baptism. The 
that is baptism going to save you? No, but it's, it will help you to understand God's mercy. It represents you saying to God, I am putting the old man away. He's going to die. I'm coming back as a new man, representing you. What they thought that that was it, that that's all they needed to do. If you get baptized, that's it. You don't have to do nothing else. You're safe. You're good. Fine. You don't have to come back. You're good. No, you're good. Got it? What did God say about Israel? Jeremiah 2.21. Somebody read for me Jeremiah 2.21. Are you guys getting this? Okay, I want you to read this. Think about this. Yet I have planted the, 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 uh, the a noble vine. He's the one that chose you. He's the one that planted you. He's leading you the whole way. Holy and in a bright sea. You're perfect. You're like, man, that, that guy is this. That's it. How then are thou turned into the degenerate plant of strange vine into me? How dare you twist my things? I made this. I made it perfect. I made it so you could save people. How dare you change it? How dare you degenerate my laws? How dare you degenerate my character? Who are you to say that this should be this one? When I already said that it should be that. They started implementing their own righteousness. I can do this better. I will make things better. The rules have to change because they don't work God's way. They started doing this and they got all twisted up. So then, there's a warning. Go next. Beware. And this is this is big. This is how it, this is big, guys. Okay, you really need to pay attention to this. There's a warning. Okay, beware. What happens when we start doing that with the church? Let's go to uh, Isaiah five seven five to seven. Beware of this. Somebody, Michael, read this for me. Come on. Beware. What chapter? Uh, Isaiah 5, 5 to 7. He says, they're not using this. 
Let me give it to somebody else. That's scary. Because we think we're like, oh, we're going to church. Oh, I got a wall here. I want to stop and this and that. You know what? Fine. You're done. That's it. I'm going to somebody else. You didn't appreciate what I did. You thought that you could do better than me. So I'm going to find somebody that can really do better than me. That's a scary thought. Why? Next. Let's go to Ezekiel 34 4. Why would he do this? Why would he do this? Michelle, you got this one? Ezekiel 34 4. Started in the backyard of a house. They only had like a makeshift roof or something. 
something that had a few shares, and now they have a full church. It started growing, and it started growing, and it just wasn't enough. So they have to build that church, and then it spread somewhere else, and then it kept spreading, and it kept spreading. Just one guy. Just one guy. That's what you can do. He says, I'm going to give you my power. The God, the, the God that created the universe did this. I'm going to give you my power. What are you going to do with it? I give you the power to create stuff. What are you going to do with it? I give you the power to raise the dead. What are you going to do with it? I give you the power to tell the future. What are you going to do with it? That's simple. He says, it's yours. It's right here. All you have to do is just accept it. And imagine what you can do with it. And we have the apostles. Look at Paul. That one guy, he went all over the world. How many churches? So that's the purpose of the church. Don't take it for granted. Don't take it for granted because he will take it for granted. We have this amazing gift, like I was saying, this is cool, this is cool, this is big. It's not just for us. Imagine how many people we could save from drugs. Imagine how many people we could save from addictions. Imagine how many people we could save from, you name it, anything. From gangs, from rapes, from it. You could save this people from God. All you have to do is accept it. Get down your knees, humble yourself, and say, okay, she teach me. Give me that repository. Show me how to do it. Train me. I'm in. Let's go. So who's in? Who wants to be in? So let's get in. Just pray. Get on the Bible. Get on your knees. Pray and ask. Me. And you will see the difference. What do you want of you guys? It's kind of sad because you know what? I, I don't need all of you. I choose all of you, but I only need one. But then it's up to us to say, okay, I, I'm on it. I'm on it. So it's your choice. You make the decision. You think about it. You ponder it. You rather stay in here? You want to keep watching movies that do nothing for you? You want to keep listening to the same trashy music? Be sad? Your heart broken all the time? Family members dying? Alcoholics? Brothers and sisters in jail. That's what you want? That's your choice? But he says, I'm going to be able to make you save those people. You're going to be able to get him out of jail. Remember Paul? He was in jail with the hands of Nothing. The chains? I give you the power. Nothing can stop. Nothing will stop. I like you see that this one with Paul. Remember when Paul was, when Paul was stoned? Everybody thought he was dead. Oh no, Paul is dead. That's it. It's over. Forget it. He's lying on the floor and you're like next to him. And the ball just ran up and left. Chris, come. Let's go to the next thing. And a robot. Non stop. You can't be stopped. You won't be stopped. Because of God. He gives you that ability. He gives you that power. They're going to hit you. They're going to whip you. They're going to put you in jail. And you're just going to say, Yep. Yeah, I got it. God's God. No problem. But it's a choice. You have to choose. So don't take the church for granted. What we have here is big. And he wants to use every single one of us. And like I say, he is the one that chose you. We're not here. He chose you. Get that in your heads. He knows that you can do this. He knows that you have the ability. And all you have to do is choose. Put the world to the side and let him back. Let's pray. Dear Father, thank you so much. Thank you so much because we don't deserve to be chosen. We haven't done anything wrong. Actually, we have done, we, we have done something wrong. We've done our whole life has, has been wrong. We don't we haven't done anything right. But yet you still have us in here. We're here in this church, we're here on the Sabbath, and, and you chose every single one of us because you know that there's something inside of us that you can use. We don't deserve it. And, and most of the time we reject it, and, and you still come in here and say, oh, you, you, I want you, I love you, you're the one. But he can't force us to do it. So let us be able to make this choice. Let us ponder on these things. Let us ponder on, on the things that you show us in the Bible. The Bible is pretty much the rule book of how everything works. You give us so many examples of how to do things right and how to do things wrong. We have the Israelites. We have their actions. We have what they did. We can see the power that you gave them. 
but they chose to do something else. So now you're giving us the same opportunity here. Every single person in here, no matter what the age is, we're all here because you chose us. It says, this people, Justine, Ryan, Frank, Esther, Jackie, Steve, Michelle, Diana, them, I want them. They're the ones that I choose, them, not, not nobody else. They're the one here. You're being chosen, just you. If you accept this job, I will give you my power, and you will be able to save the world. So let us think about this thing. Think about the wondrous things that we could do through you. Not because to glorify ourselves, but just the fact to save our loved ones. How many of us have lost somebody to something of the world? How many of us have done that? that has lost something? Someone to, to drugs, to alcohol, to disease, to cancer. And to know that we could save them. Just because God said that I love them and I will use you to save them. All we have to do is choose. We are your church. We are here because we want to know more. We want this repository and we want to be the light of the world. Use us. Take us. Forgive us for our sin. Take this pride away. And finally let your Holy Spirit guide us and, and use us. And so we can go out there, break the walls of sin, and put the walls of salvation all around us. We ask you all this in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you.